In this video, we're going to discuss doing exports and imports of data using our bulk export page on SoStock. Now, we've actually updated this recently where we have multiple different types of exports. And so we've broken these down into different categories. So up at the top, you're gonna to see products and you'll see active and all. So there's two versions of the products export. The first one is active only and the second one is all. And that just means this one includes inactive products. So if you only want to, if you want to make edits to existing products that you have in SoStock that you're using, just download the active products only. If you want to reactivate old inactive products, download the all products and you can, you can activate those. Uh, and I'll show you an example in a minute. I just want to cover the list as it currently stands. Vendors, kind of same thing. This is like your your warehouses and your suppliers active and all warehouse inventory levels is all because even if you have a, a an archived uh, vendor we still want to track the inventory for that for those products so this is going to be all of your warehouse levels now we have the demand plan and everything below this point has its own individual tutorial so if i click here there's a specific tutorial for the demand plan and if I click on forecast settings, there is a specific tutorial for forecast settings. So this video that you're watching now is an overview video on how to kind of handle the products, inventory levels, and uh, vendors. And then these down here all have their specific tutorials. Bulk PO, if you want to upload multiple purchase orders in one big spreadsheet, you can do that here. If you want to create multiple warehouse transfers or work orders, as we call them, you can use this template. And again, these all have their own individual tutorials. Uh, receiving purchase orders in bulk, you can do that here. And then we have the original, um, what we call all data downloads. And this is what we used to have up until uh, 2024. So I'm gonna download, show you on this one, and then I'm gonna explain how this export works. So I'm gonna choose this one here, and I'm gonna click download. So this says quick export active products, but it's actually products vendors and warehouse levels. So we'll wait for it to finish processing and we'll just go ahead and download it. And then we'll open that up in Excel. Now, the rest of this tutorial is going to work and be relevant for whether you're downloading the all export or the individual vendor sheet, the product sheet, or the warehouse inventory level sheet. So when you download either the all spreadsheet, which is a combination of all four, or the individual spreadsheets, they all work the exact same way, whether it's just whether you want it to be separate or combined. So I'm gonna show you on the combined version. So for vendors, these are all of our suppliers and warehouses that were imported either from Amazon when we did the first API poll or stuff that you've added into the system. And as you can see here, you can make changes to your vendors. And I'm not gonna go through all of these, but it's pretty straightforward, okay? You can just change the data and then upload it. If you wanted to add a vendor, you can do so below this gray line. And just keep in mind that there are required fields and they are marked in an asterisk. So if you have a long list, you might want to lock the top row by clicking on row number two, freezing panes, and then you can scroll down so you can see which are the required fields. So if I wanted to add a vendor, I could add a vendor here by putting in a vendor name. Are they a supplier? Yes or no. You can see there's some required fields. Just type in those required fields, yes or no, and then anything else that's required, such as country of origin, things like that, and then you can upload your new vendors here. On the product sheet, these are all of my active products. If I downloaded the products all sheet, it would also show inactive products. So it might have a product down here that says inactive. Right? And that means it's not showing up on my active dashboards. And I can change it to active by simply typing in the word active or dragging one of these cells down. So I can make inactive products active. I can also make active products inactive. And if I wanted to add products here, I could add them below the line. Same thing as the vendor sheet. There are required fields. So again, I would probably want to lock the top row. So I can scroll down at the bottom of my list and I can see which are those required fields. To add a product, I need a product name and I need the primary supplier. Now the primary supplier has to match exactly as it's listed here inside of SoStock. So if this was a new product from my widget supplier, I'd probably copy 
and paste that information here. Right, and then the name of my new product is, or, or whatever, right? Um, I can also put an ASIN SKU in any other data I want when I'm adding products, okay? Brands is pretty straightforward. Um, this particular account doesn't have any brands, so there's not much to talk about there. It's just brand name, and you can assign a brand to a product on the product sheet by scrolling over to the appropriate column, which is called brands, and that is column M right now. You can add product tags in here as well. I'm not going to go through all these columns or this video would be too long, but this is pretty straightforward. The last one is warehouse inventory levels. And again, each one of these is its own individual download, but they all work the exact same way. I'm just demoing this to you on the combined sheet. So every vendor has an ID number and a name, which comes directly from the vendor sheet. So the warehouse inventory level lists the vendor ID for that warehouse, the warehouse name, the quantity in units, then you've got the product name, and then to the right of column F, you've got ASIN, UPC, SKU, or product ID in SoStock. So if I wanted to change an inventory level, all I have to do is find the product that I want to edit, make sure it's the correct warehouse, because this is actually going to be listed multiple times if I have uh, this product at different warehouses. I'll have one line up here for this warehouse and another line down lower on the sheet for a different warehouse. But let's assume that I want to update row number seven and I went from 100 to 1,000 units. I can edit those numbers there and then just save this document and upload it. I can also add new inventory levels at the bottom by putting in my required fields. Put my warehouse name in there which is like I did. Again, you want to copy and paste exactly as it's written on the vendor's sheet, my quantity. This is all optional data. Now what I need is I don't even need the, um, the product name. I just need one of these data points, okay? So usually I'm kind of a, an ASIN guy. I always work with ASINs. I'm gonna just paste my ASIN. Let's say this was a brand new ASIN. Uh, I'm assigning this product, okay? To this, work, to this warehouse and adding 1,500 units. That's exactly what I'm doing. I can't add products to the system here. That would be done on the product sheet. And I cannot add new vendors here. That would be done on the vendor sheet. But I can assign an existing product to an existing vendor and then add inventory to that vendor. And I can do that from this warehouse level sheet. And then um, if I didn't have an ASIN, I could use a UPC or a SKU, or I could always copy the product ID number from here on the product sheet. All right, once we finished our work on the file, we, of course we want to save changes, and then we can upload it. So we're gonna scroll down here, and we're gonna choose the appropriate file type that matches the file that we downloaded. In this case, it was my products, vendors, warehouses. Okay, so I'm gonna upload my file that I just worked on, and upload. You will see that it's processing and it might take a few minutes or several minutes depending on how large the file is. So just be patient and wait for that to finish processing. Now if you see an error message you're going to get a red banner at the top and something that looks like this. File has been processed, correct the errors below. So if we scroll down we can see that we missed some data. And this is cool because it shows you what sheet and which cell actually column and row, and then what the issue is. So in this case, I am missing a value, right? Is this a bundled product, yes or no? So let's go open up my file again and fix that. So on the product sheet, row H10, I forgot to answer this question. So all I have to do is put yes, and now I can re-upload the file. I can also go in here and just fix it. Right? And if it was several issues for the same thing, I could just click this down arrow and it would copy that down. Products, black leather, vendor name. Oh, I forgot to put a vendor name in there. It's called new supplier blah. Or, or I could actually go into the file and correct it in the file and then re-upload the file. Right? And then missing data here is my SoStock ID number. So this is very interesting. This is important, right? On the warehouse inventory levels, it says I'm missing a product ID. 
because I didn't give an ASIN, a SKU, or a UPC or anything. So it says you don't have an ID, meaning you don't have any way to identify this product. So I could copy and paste this here and re-upload the file, or of course, I could just put that in here, and then I can finish my upload. And when you're done, you'll get a success, and then it'll finish processing. So that's the overview. If you have any more questions, please contact us, and we can help you with any issues you may have. Cheers.